Hey guys, Matt Wilson here from Rope Die, and uh, I want to welcome you back to another. I think I need to find like a like a name for these uh, little chats in the evening. Uh, all I can come up with is the balcony sessions. I don't know, that's kind of lame. Uh, so I'm sure you guys have got some brilliant ideas. If you can just like put them in the comments down below, help me come up with a name for this. Um, anyway, so. Yeah, it's been a couple of weeks since we've had a chat, I guess. Uh, and in those two weeks, a couple of things have happened. So, first thing was that this channel has gone over 500 subscribers. And I know that is minuscule, absolutely minuscule in the, the scheme of things. But I still think that's pretty cool. And it means I'm halfway towards my goal for 2018 of growing this channel to 1,000 subscribers. Which I know is minuscule, but I still think it's cool. There's... 500 and, what are we now, 522 people out there that share this passion for raw denim and are interested in like sharing their experiences and learning a little bit more about it. So that's very, very cool. And the second thing that happened, um, which, okay, so maybe there's 521 subscribers that really like what, what we're doing here. Um, but I got my first hater, like me personally. Like somebody took the time to watch my video and then call me, well, you guys can have a look around in the comments, I actually left it there because I actually find this very, very cool and you know who you are, you know who you, you know you did it because um, for some reason you subscribed to me, so thank you very much. All the big YouTube stars, they're always talking about like the haters and the people who are always really down in them and so it's just kind of like, it's a confirmation that I'm doing something right here, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Anyway, shall we get started talking about some denim now? Okay, good. Right, so a couple of really good questions came in um, on the last few videos. I don't think I'm gonna get through all of them today um, okay, so just some housekeeping first of all, uh, Julian Park, and Julian's been uh, subscribed to me from like, from right in the beginning, and I appreciate it Julian, thanks very much. Uh, so he says 316 uses tanner goods patches in their denim, but I think Telson uses red wing leather, and he also says great video, so thanks man, really appreciate it. Um, so as far as I know, I did check up on this, uh, 316 and Telson use tanner goods leathers. And the only brand that I know of that's actually been allowed to use the Red Wing leathers is Free Note Cloth. Um, that's uh, a bunch of guys. Actually, you, if you're coming from America, you probably know them. Um, they're amazing jeans, they're amazing gear. Um, they've not quite made their, self, made their way across this side of the pond yet, but I think that's gonna change quite soon. Um, Anyway, there is an interview with David, who um, is like one of the founding members. That's over on ropedye.com, and I'm going to put a link to that in the description. Anyway, check that out. Um, okay, so next one, BF30 Duca. He would like to hear my opinion regarding different types of cotton. Um, and that's actually a really, really good one. I mean, that is... Yeah, I mean, that's the very, very fundamentals of what makes up our genes. I mean, it's the, yeah, it's the core of the denim. So, okay. In my personal experience, I have tried three or four different types of cotton that I know of, that I can really, I can speak of. So, there's Upland cotton, and that is basically, I think, nine out of ten types of cotton is upland cotton. I mean, this uh, will be upland cotton, I'm almost certain of. Um, then there's Egyptian cotton. Uh, if you've ever read Catch-22, you'll know all about that. Uh, there's Pima cotton, um, and then there's Zimbabwe cotton. And there's actually more. Um, there's a lot more than that. Hold on a sec. Okay, just, um, so I'm going to talk about the ones that I know about in a second and like some things you want to look at and things you want to keep in mind. But just for my information, your information, um, a quick Google search reveals that there's 
nine different types of cotton, so Asiatic cotton, Egyptian cotton, Canton cotton, Sea Island cotton, American Upline cotton, that's what I was speaking of before, organic cotton and Pima cotton, French terry cotton, bamboo cotton. Okay. That doesn't mention Zimbabwe cotton, so I'm not too sure if that list is totally complete. Anyway, so the thing about cotton, I guess the, the important thing is what's known as the staple length, and that is the sort of average length from a certain selection of like how long the fibres are, and the, the better the cotton, the longer the fibres. That means that it's going to sort of weave together, it's going to sort of, sorry, it's going to spin together better, it's going to give sort of a more luxurious, softer feel to it. And so the more luxurious cotton, so your Pima cotton, your Zimbabwe cotton, um, they've got the, the longer, and the Egyptian cotton, they've got the, the longer fibres. Um, so upland cotton, you guys, if you're wearing anything cotton, go to your, I don't know, go to your cupboards, pull out a t-shirt, that's, chances are it's going to be upland cotton. So we've all experienced that. Um, Pima cotton has also got long fibres and it makes a very, very soft fabric. Um, I've got a few t-shirts made of Pima cotton and they're just, they're really, really nice to wear. They've got that softness, but they've also got that heft to it as well. I've never had a pair of jeans made out of Pima cotton. Um, then there's Egyptian cotton, and that is known for making sort of bed sheets and cushion covers. It's very, very soft, again, for this sort of long staple. But again, I've never had a pair of jeans made out of Egyptian cotton that I know about. Um, and then we get onto the Zimbabwe cotton, and this is just like the higher, higher, higher echelons of like luxury, not even luxury, but just like quality cotton. It's, I think it's got the longest staples you can find anywhere in the world. It's only grown in this one place in the world, only harvested once a year. So it's very hard to get hold of. And the thing about this is these long fibers, they, they weave into this like really luxurious um, yarn. The, the denim just, or the yarn will soak up the indigo really, really beautifully. Um, the denim that comes out, it's got this amazing heft to it. It's just, yeah, I do have a pair of jeans um, made from Zimbabwe cotton, and there's some of them. There's the Big John Rare 008, and to this day, I've never had uh, a pair of jeans that have faded so beautifully well. I, there's a lot of other things that go into that, um, certainly, but I mean, like the base of it, the cotton was just, it's just beautiful, um, and I know a lot of the the premium denim brands do look for Zimbabwe cotton simply for this reason. Um, yeah, so that's just like a little sort of primer on the types of cotton. Uh, what else have we got? One moment. <laughs> okay, please talk a bit about the way denim is woven, making it denim and weft, etc. Oof. Tell you what, I'm going to settle. Uh, no, I'm going to settle that. But I'm going to uh, cover that topic uh, another night. That's that's a pretty big topic, and as I say, think, yeah, I am going to make like a proper vlog of this, so I can sort of make some diagrams and demonstrate it properly. Uh, so that is coming, but it's a really good question. Um, that was from David uh, Ramplin, by the way. So, yeah, David, that is coming. I promise. Um, what is this resin rinse I see on dark fashion jeans? Okay, that one I, actually to, I had to look up. Um, guys, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, asking me about rinses and things, I just, that's not part of like the raw denim culture at all. Um, the closest thing we come to a rinse is a one wash. Um, I mean, I had a quick Google around, a quick read around. It seems to be just, they add some gubbins to, to the denim post, uh, sort of manufacturing of the jeans, post the jeans being sewn together, and it seems to, uh, I don't know, make it more rigid or something. So it's the the crease line set in. I mean, it, to me, it it just it looks kind of like it looks a little bit like wax cotton, but it's probably nothing so nice as wax. 
It just looks a bit grubby, to be honest. So, yeah, I'm not a hundred percent sure what what resin rinse is. Uh, it's just it, it's not part of my expertise, not even close. Um, so sorry, John Uliak. Uliak. Sorry, John. Anyway, um, right, and then covering again. So this is the last question in this particular. Um, so this. This came off the setting the denim denim record straight video. Uh, right from Nikia Salar. Uh, so the reason the dark wash denims don't fade so fast is that they don't really use indigo, but other indigo kinds of dyes to hold the fast the yarn. Um. Yeah. Unless. So this is just is a pure guess because not uh, there's there's so many different denims out there with calling themselves dark wash and so many different processes. I'm guessing you think it's not fading simply because it's gone through that wash already and it's probably had some distressing as well to sort of fake the honeycombs and the whiskers and the fade patterns. So a lot of the excess indigo and a lot of the contrast that you're going to get out has already been sort of put in artificially and so they're not your fade patterns they're like sort of made for you and I'm, I presume that the reason you think they're not fading so fast is simply because you're not seeing your own fade patterns because they're set in for you and so you don't notice any differences really sort of wash for wash for wash and I'm guessing most people wash these jeans pretty regularly um, and therefore you're also not going to see so sort of these dramatic fade patterns as well. If you start off with a pair of raws, they're just like laden with indigo. I mean that, that very, very first little fade that sets in like that spark of blue, you're really going to notice that. But in something that's pretty faded, even though it's called dark wash anyway, if you take a dark wash denim and a pair of raw denims put them next to each other, you're going to notice a dramatic difference. Um, yes, yeah, so all that fade potential, it's already gone. If you starting with a pair of raws, you've got all the potential in the world, and you're going to notice the differences and those sort of high contrast fades when they when they do come out. Um. Okay, how how long is this? Okay, I've been prattling on for a little while, so I'm just going to leave it there for this. So I, I covered, I covered the questions in that video, and there was a few on another one that I'm definitely going to cover, no doubt about that, and yeah. It'd be really, really great if uh, you could help me out with some ideas for the uh, for the name of these uh, balcony sessions, or I'm just going to keep calling them the balcony sessions. And of course, guys, if you're new here and if this has helped you out a little bit, if you're digging what I'm doing, it'd be great if you subscribe to the channel and you can hit that bell button. Of course, head over to ropedye.com and we've got so much information on anything and everything you could possibly want to know about denim, leather, accessories. Trust me guys, it's there. If it's not there, drop us a line and we're gonna be able to point you in the right direction. Um, head over to our Instagram account. This is really running well just now. We're super happy with this and we're posting like a couple of times a day, just like news on stories. Um, we're posting up like inspiration. We're posting up new releases. Uh, so anything that's going on, this is a really nice way to sort of really keep your finger on the pulse with us. And yeah, until next time guys, Thank you very much for watching, thanks very much for tuning in, and I will see you soon.